Ladies and gentlemen, we have finally arrived to the diary. <laughs> yes, we finally got here. The Ricky Gervais Show, Season 1, Episode 7, The Diary. All right, um, I'm, I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> I've been wanting to watch this since you guys started talking about it, and it's been a while, so let's just, uh, let's do this. Let's watch. I just, I have no, no nothing to say. Let's just go. It's better be good, though. With every, the, every, everybody hyped it up so freaking much, this better be good. Like, good, good. I'm gonna excuse me. Oh, Pilt, this there we is go. one of them. Testing. Is that all right? There we go, there we go. Hello, and welcome to the Ricky Gervais Show. With me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Hello. the little round-headed buffoon, that is Carl Pilkington. All right. Gets me every time. <laughs> I love it. I still love it. I've seen it seven times officially, and I still. Carl's love it. been on holiday again, hasn't he? Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, because Carl, you you don't do anything, and you have weekends off. You take at least five or six weeks holiday a year, even though you haven't got a job now. You're meant to be doing this, and yet you still so go. So your whole holiday. life's a holiday, basically. Yeah. Why do you need a holiday to you? You, you potter around. You, it, your, your big your big day last week was going to the cobblers. So. Why do you need a break so much this oh, week? It's, it's just that, you know, it's, it's good for your brain and that, isn't it? It's, it's, it opens well, it up a bit. You are not evidence for that. Where did you go? Grand Canary. For a week? Yeah. Just sitting yeah. around? Um, well, there isn't much else to do at Grand Canary. I mean, I don't want to go slagging a place off because every time I seem to talk about somewhere, I get into trouble for it. <laughs> but it's just a, like a big rock. It's Brilliant. just vol volcanic, isn't it? It's and just... you must have looked like a, a little barnacle on that. Have you been there before? Um, been been near it before to another rock, which was just. Well, what you had your fingers burned? Why did you go back? <laughs> because you think, well, they can't have loads of these islands that are the same, like just a big rock with hotels on. They can't get away with it. So you <laughs> think, they well, the next one. get away with it. But why? What? Why do you keep going to these places that are rocks? Why don't you investigate first? Ask your travel agent. Is this a giant rock? Because because that's what you do, isn't it? You go and find out yourself. I mean, <laughs> when when Armstrong went to the moon, what was he expecting up there? Okay, that's gotcha. a fact. That's a big rock, of and he course. still went all that way. Yep. <laughs> I don't so, know what that so, point was. No. So what? Enough. So what I'm saying is though. What do you make of this place? You enjoy it, Grand Canaria? It was just a big rock, but did you? you I bet you... the moon was better. Really. <laughs> What did you do? Oh my it god! It was just uh, well, um, it was big hotel, like big massive places where there's loads of people, and you know you go for your dinner. That describes a hotel. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Me. you've nailed that. But I've the, been to a few. That sounds like it. No, but, <laughs> do, you know, do you know what I mean? Though there's the sort, there's the nice small ones where mm. it's just enough people, but this is like mental, and and it was all, it was it was full of old people really. Yeah. I mean, that's probably why it's called Grand Canaria, right? Because it's just... Grand oh, Grand? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but what I thought I'd start doing is uh, start a diary. OK, why? Just because I, I sort of had a bit of time on my hands and that. Just thought, write it down, write, write stuff down. And like. do you hope that this one day will become one of the great literary documents like Samuel Pepys' diary? Um, I haven't heard of that. Is it any good? <laughs> You've never heard of Samuel Pepys' diary? No, the, the, the most the, famous diary, uh, other than probably Anne Frank's. I've heard of Anne Frank's, I and, that, and I thought if she's sat in a, you know, a loft, knocking stuff up, <sighs> not much going on in her life at that point. Yet oh, she was boy. still writing it down. Yeah, <coughs> whereas she'd been to Grand Canaria. Yeah. I thought so. There is stuff going on that I can chat about. Start a diary. Sure. You started a diary. Yeah. And what are you going to do? You did you did you keep it up every day? Yeah, just. Uh, oh, can I read it, please? Well, the diary's meant to be sort can, of... Please, can I read personal? some out on this podcast? I... Carl... Some of it, though, is only relevant to me. It's sort of... Oh, running... this is... Please, give me The it. little hands to me. Oh, this my so God. Cute. I mean, this isn't... I haven't just... Keep <laughs> writing! <laughs> <laughs> it's oh one of those desk diaries. It's huge. It's about a foot long. <laughs> and it's... Ma oh, that is amazing. Imagine if Anne Frank's had been like that. As she got out... <laughs> right. Uh, everyone would have heard it clank down on the desk. Yeah, but the writing's <laughs> quite big, isn't it? Oh look! Give us oh, that. Do you know? That. Do you know about joined up writing? Have you this heard about is that? No Amazing. Point. Sometimes you can't read it, can you? So it's right, best to okay. look oh, at. Oh look! Oh look! Oh my God! <laughs> it starts on the first day. This is this is wonderful. Going on holiday to Grand Canaria today. Woke up to the news that Tony Banks had died. There was a piece of on the news about how everyone was shocked. Got me thinking about an invention that would be good. Right, a, a watch. 
that counted down your life. Right. If it says you've got three days left, <laughs> go to the doctors. <laughs> <laughs> Told Suzanne about invention. She said she wouldn't buy one. But she said that about the iPod. How uh, and how would this device work? This watch. I mean, how would you uh, how would you know when you were about to die? Have you, is that a concern? Again, not for you to worry about. Presumably the boffins. And no. Sort of all that. I was thinking is that Tony Banks fell. You know, he died, and everyone was shocked about it. But if you had like a little watch on. But how does it? You can't just say, "Wouldn't it be good?" How how would this work? Yeah. Um. I imagine you're in the patent office, going, "Got an idea." They go, "Oh, hey. certainly, yeah, Mr. Bogan. What's your idea? Watch that counting down your life. Oh, how does that work?" What? Just, just wear well, it. Just pop it on your wrist. No, no, no. No, what do you mean? Just pop it on your wrist. <laughs> How does it work? Just pop it on your wrist. Brilliant. You're an idiot. Well, it's interesting <laughs> that he goes on. The flight to Gran Canaria was a bit bumpy. I thought about the clock that counts down your life again, and I wondered if it would know if you were going to die in a disaster. <laughs> no, he's querying his own. His own <laughs> he's wondering yeah. if he would know. He's invented this. He's and invented, <laughs> now he's <laughs> <even> sure. <laughs> They're being mean again. Uh, the fellow on the plane <laughs> was reading face. Koi Mag. It was a fishing magazine. I glanced over and noticed he was reading the Pond of the Month article. Don't think they could make it into a weekly magazine. Well, to be fair to you, I because re I remember seeing a guy on the train once reading Carp Monthly, yeah. a magazine do dedicated entirely to carp, and it had it had Carp of the Month. And I just thought, you know, once you're like three months in, the editor must be stressing if we've got any more carp. <laughs> we've got a carp that's actually done anything. That's I reckon if they used the same one twice, there wouldn't be many complaints. No one would be noticing. No, that, well, that's the carp they used two years ago. <laughs> there was a really fat bloke on the plane. He was playing on his PSP. While I waited to go to the toilet, I looked at what game he was playing. It was darts. He's that fat and lazy, you can't even face playing a more active game on a games console. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Suzanne got off the coach along with a couple of old people. One of them was in a wheelchair. I don't think it was wise of them to come to a volcanic island with a wheelchair. <laughs> Everywhere's I'm with pretty him. rough, paving and slopey. Yep. Guess I'll keep an eye on it as the weeks go on. I'm with him on that one. For day sure. two in Gran Canaria. Brilliant. We're only at day two. The hotel's a bit odd. I've never seen as many cross-eyed people in one location. <laughs> that's, oh, enough, isn't it? that's amazing. Well, you may as well right. let me read on a bit more. But this is amazing. Well, look, come back this is a brilliant now. diary. This might be the best diary ever written. Oh. While sat listening to the kinks on my iPod, I wondered if everybody thinks in their accent. I know I do. What's, what's this? What are you talking about? Just just that, uh, you know, when, I, when I've been sat there lying on the lounger, right, and I was <laughs> thinking about stuff. How probably. do you know you think in your accent? Tell me a typical thought. Because because what I mean is, say, say if I was hearing. like, if I saw something, right, do you know how I say, like, oh, that's a bit weird, isn't it? That, no, but that was I don't have said. to. But in uh, when you think, I don't think the sentence is like I'm saying it. It's just a thought. The thought appears. It's conceptual and it's already there. It's not like um, I go, Rick, what? just uh, looking at that fellow over there, were you? Yeah, I was yeah. I've learned about this recently. Um, apparently, I'm so excited. <laughs> Because I haven't met, uh, obviously I haven't met Ricky, but I have met a, le a lot of people but that have what Ricky has. But, 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 it has been public information or whatever. <laughs> a while ago there were studies and stuff that most people, not it's not 50-50 and it's not like 90-10. But in my experience, anyway, most people have the inner monologue, right? So this is what he's talking about, having the accent or whatever, where it is, you hear it, you have a voice in your inside your head. Most people have it freaking constantly, 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 constantly. It's just there's a voice inside your head that is your thoughts, right? And um, there's also obviously images and visualiz visualizations and stuff, but you have that voice and stuff. And it's funny because there was a lot of, there was like a lot of things, people talking about it and stuff, and it came to light that that voice inside your head, first of all, it can take the voice of anyone you choose. You just, you know, you think about it and you can hear that voice as, you know, Morgan Freeman or God or whatever. But usually it's your own voice, right? In your own accent, of course. And um, that voice, you can hear it screaming or you can hear it whispering or you can hear it talking, but it will always be the same volume. So you, you can just like sit there 
and he have an internal scream going on and it's at the same volume that all your other thoughts are in. And I always thought that was very interesting. Now, there are other people, which I'm guessing Ricky, that I've only, I have all the people I've asked, <laughs> which is quite a lot. Uh, there's only been one person that doesn't have the inner monologue, but has like what he's saying, just like the concept of the idea or the visual visualization. He does not have that inner monologue. He does not have a voice inside his head where his thoughts are, you know, formulated through a voice, it's formulated differently. Now, I asked this person several times to explain to me how the fridge does he come up with a thought or how does he remember stuff? Uh, <laughs> I don't know if this comes to the point or not, but his memory is terrible. But um, in a group of friends and stuff, everyone was like making fun of him. Like, all right, so for example, you're sitting down, the people that have them in a monologue, sitting down, it's like, oh, like inside your head, you can think with a voice, oh crap, it's three o'clock, I'm gonna be late, I gotta go to the doctors or whatever. And they were asking, if you don't have that voice, to, like remind you of things or, 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 you know, to plan out your day or organize yourself, like how, if that's in that same situation, if you're late to go to the doctors at 3 p.m. or whatever, how do you, you know, think that? And they would make fun of it. They were like, do you just see a clock at 3 p.m. and then a doctor? <laughs> like, he, he could not explain to us how his thought process was. But apparently, Ricky, now, I'm going to confirm it in a second because I kind of paused in the middle. But apparently, he does not have that. So he's not understanding Carl, which does not mean Carl is dumb. He's just not understanding it because he works one a different one of the two ways there are to work. Now. Yes, about the accent. Also, since I'm bilingual, it can change languages as well, as long as you know the language. <laughs> you can do whatever you want with that little voice. Anyway, let's go. Sorry. Um, it's I just, just a I thought, thought that was. Appears. It's conceptual. See, you're saying it's conceptual, but that's not the case to the inner monologue people. Uh, I'm sorry. I rambled, but I always thought this was so interesting. And I found out a little bit ago, and I just, I loved it. That's why I ask everybody and stuff, but I always thought this was so Jordan, interesting. Don't think the sentence is like I'm saying it. It's just a thought. The thought appears. It's conceptual, and it's already there. It's not like um, I go, Rick, what? Just, also, uh, also, also, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just, I'm so, <laughs> I'm so pumped up about this. Because I also asked this, this, this friend of, that doesn't have the inner monologue, like, are you not confused when you see, like, movies or TV or this or that when the person has the inner monologue of thoughts? When you, you can hear people's thoughts in a show or something, are you not, like, confused about, whoa, that's weird, I don't think that way, you know? And I asked him, he's like, oh, I never really thought about it. I'm like, dude, what the hell? <laughs> so, like, Ricky as well, do you not realize that people that talk to themselves all the time or have inner, like, internal conversations with themselves. People are like, I have arguments with myself all the time. <laughs> and I always win. <laughs> but anyway, like how is, I don't know what age he is there, but how does, how has he never figured out that uh, most people or other people have uh, an inner monologue? There. It's not like, um, Sorry, I'll go, I'm done. Rick, what? I think. Just uh, looking at a fellow over there, were you? Yeah, I was, yeah. Um, I was thinking it looks a bit weird. Oh, so was I. I don't. I don't think out whole sentences. Whereas you have Carl. Carl. Li Carl. Stop listening to the kinks for a minute. Look over there. More. More cross-eyed people. <laughs> no. Well, that's yeah. That's is that how your mind works? In a way. I yeah. guess Stephen is. And that's when Stephen because, is because, because I thought. Plays a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's great that he has to think about whole sentences. Because I thought. But does that work? That's weird, isn't it? Right. I didn't think that's weird, isn't it? And I no. thought I actually think in my accent. And then I thought. Does Stephen Hawking, does he, when he's doing his maths and that, is he, I don't know where he's from, so I don't know what his accent would be like. I think he's from uh, <coughs> Kent or Cambridge or Oxford right, or something. Right, so... So you think he might think in his... In, in his voice, voice? In that, yeah. in that voice in computerised voice. I doubt it. Just wonder, <laughs> had lunch inside today due I to I imagine he weather. thinks in his own voice. Sat next to an old fellow. If, old if, if, if he has his internal monologue, I imagine, it's his own voice from when he could speak. Just wondered. Had lunch inside today due to shite weather. Sat next to an old fella. Old men's ears and noses carry on growing as they get older. Suzanne noticed his fingers were fat too. Maybe they continue to grow. Suzanne didn't laugh when I said her arse had the same problem. <laughs> <laughs> day three, laughing. cloudy start to the day. Had pie and chips in a cafe. Had a bit of an argument with Suzanne because I thought it was daft that we were paying for food when we were on an all-inclusive holiday. Changed my mind when I saw the... They sold pie though. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> the cafe was called Tattoos. The fellow who owned it didn't have any tattoos. But we never saw his wife. <laughs> Had a drink in a bar. Everyone sat and watched one of the local cats lick its bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a fun bar. It's the greatest holiday in the world. <laughs> in his defence, he uh, said it wasn't the great. The entertainment in that town. Went back to the hotel and had a sleep before tea. I love the fact you're like, you're moaning about old people, but you're just as bad. He's done nothing so far. <laughs> He's done nothing. He's got a hip. He's on a rock. He what else is he going to do? About ducks being badly treated. There was a really ugly one with bent legs. Poor thing. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Why does he write this down? Why oh, not? Oh, God. Oh. There is a fat bloke from Bolton who is in the pool as I write this. He's got a big tattoo on his back, but I can't work out what it is. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. He just got out of the pool and burped. He just felt like you had to keep us abreast of that. <laughs> Everything's in the diary. I've just seen it get to the point where you're going, breathed in. <laughs> yeah. Breathed out again. <laughs> there was a big fat fellow in the sea who kept his T-shirt on. If you're big and fat, is there more chance of you getting burnt because there's more of you on show? I asked Suzanne and she said she didn't know in that sort of not listening kind of way. <laughs> I went down about to see if the fat bloke was going to get in the kayak. <laughs> but Suzanne, <laughs> Suzanne said we had a head back. The way this <laughs> is Slow way in to see if he's going to <laughs> capsize. This is perfect. We got home today, so we got up early to get the last bit of cloud. <laughs> no, it's, it's just that it wasn't... Uh, it, it's, it's not that sunny all the time. I mean, I, I was sat in, in weather that... If it was like that here, there's no way I'd be sat in the garden. <laughs> But yeah. because you're on holiday, it's like, well, we've got to sit in it. Put your coat on. So are you going to continue to write this diary? Every yeah, single day? It's amazing. Keep this diary up. No, it's amazing. I, I, no, I will. I will keep it up. Because what I find as well is, I think earlier on, before I went away, I think I did learn something. And because I wrote it down, I, I remembered it's it a stuck. bit um, better. Better. So What was that? Can't remember. I was just thinking then, I forgot it now. But, <laughs> I knew it! but I remembered looking back at it and not having to read it all because I remembered the end of it before I read it, if you know what I mean. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Harry from Canterbury wants to know whether any of us have ever had any cruel nicknames. Um, he claims that he's uh, quite tall and rather hirsute, and he says he's often called Lurch or Wolfie. Um, he's always thought that Carl looks a bit like Mr. Potato Head. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, there's no potato that round, but um, I suppose you could fashion a potato to be that round. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we could, if anyone can uh, carve a potato into the roundest head ever, <laughs> yeah. pop a couple of eyes on it. Make um, it look as much like Carl as possible. Exactly. But yeah, did any nicknames, did you ever have a nickname, uh, Rick? No, mine was boring, I didn't have any, it was just around the name, like Jerv or something like that. No, I didn't have nicknames. I always wanted a nickname. Um, I just thought it was quite cool for some reason, particularly because gangsters always seem to have nicknames. Lefty. You know, fingers. Yeah. Lefty, yeah. Uh, Scarface. Yeah. And so I, I decided that I thought, because no one was giving me a nickname at school, it was kind of annoying, or certainly not to my face, yeah. <laughs> that I decided to just come up with one. Yeah. And so I went, I remember I was at lunch once, and I just said to my mate Phil... How old were you? Uh, 12, 13. Brilliant. I just said to him, uh, <laughs> Phil, um, don't know if you know, mate, but... Um, <laughs> People aren't calling me Steve anymore. Everyone's everyone's calling me Spud now. Spud. Now I don't know why I thought Spud. It's weird we should talk about Mr. Potato. Head. I don't know why I thought Spud was a was a cool nickname. I just I think it's, it's a grown up it, name though, isn't it? And it's also because I think it sounded like uh, it, it was probably either something that you'd find in one of those kids books, like the Famous Five or like the Bash Street Kids. They'd be Spud, and I always imagine with Spud, he's not the leader of the gang, but he's a reliable member. I think you know Spud I mean? is the biggest lorry driver in one yeah. particular sort of uh, car park. Yeah, and he always comes Spud. Okay. Yeah, and he gets out, all right, boys, and he's big and massive, and it, Spud can eat two breakfasts. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. But I just in my mind, it was yeah that I would be one day part of a gang. And it's I'm Pinky, this is Joe Joe, and the tall guy Spud. And you know, catch on, never really caught. And he just went, Oh, yeah, right. And no one started. And I was hoping he'd go, You know, everyone's calling Steve Spud. Yeah. But of course. Hey, Spud, the first time I said Spud, and you go, What? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You'd be really proud, wouldn't you? No. <laughs> Did you have a nickname? Um, Not, not really. I mean, there was a lot of people on the estate that I grew up on. You know, nicknames are, are big things on estates and that. Yeah. Um, a lot of my dad's mates, right? What what their nicknames did 
was tell you about them. Do you know how I said about the Elephant Man's a good name? Yeah. Because, like, you know what you're going to get. If someone said, Elephant Man's popping around in a bit, it wouldn't <laughs> be a shock when he walked in. Yeah. Right? So, so it, was, it worked in that sort of, uh, sort of thing. You know, okay. so there was, uh, there was John the Screw, right? John the Screw? Yeah. Well, he had sex a lot or he worked in a prison? No, he had a DIY shop. <laughs> <laughs> So, so you had him, right? right? There was uh, okay. there was Fred the Veg. Yeah. Which is, <coughs> which I assume nice. it's because he was at the same IQ as you. Yeah. Or, or or he was in a coma. Yeah. <laughs> right. There was there was uh, there was my uncle tattoo stuff. I like how he just oh, right. Right. ignored yeah. it. He had he had like loads of tattoos that he'd just done himself. Oh my right. god. The the problem <laughs> was because he did his tattoos himself, the ones on his left arm were really good. <laughs> right, of course. Because he was right handed. On his right arm, rubbish. Right. right. Um so so there was him. <laughs> Great. And there was um Jimmy the Hat. Jimmy who, the Hat? Yeah. Did and he that, always wear a hat? No he didn't. That that's that was the point there. That he he never wore a hat. That's amazing. <laughs> How can you pick up on someone never wearing a hat? How would you ever notice? I'll tell you what, I've noticed something about Jimmy. What? Go on. He doesn't wear a hat. <laughs> why, why was he not called Jimmy the Parrot? Because he, he never carries a parrot. <laughs> no, uh, well, that's just the way, I mean, that's how they work, isn't it? I mean, it, that, it that, here comes Jimmy Three Legs. Why'd you call him that? He hasn't got three legs. <laughs> I didn't really have one apart from, um, like, I had a CB. You know, like when you'd go on a CB radio and have a chat to people. Oh, this was a craze in the, uh, was it late 70s, early 80s? Sort of early 80s. And, uh, it was just short band radio, wasn't it? Everyone had these little handsets and they'd speak to each other in the sort of local area. Yeah, it was mainly, I think it started off with like. Lorry drivers, isn't it? Yeah, truckers, yeah, because there was that, that thing from like about 1970. Convoy. Seven, it was Convoy, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so so I had one of them and the handle, I had, I had two handle different Handle mean is your nickname, your yeah, name. Yeah, there's loads of code, code stuff. Yeah. Um, I had I had a couple. I had, um, there was Pilkey 01, because right. like I say, there's a lot of Pilkingtons and that. In Manchester, so if someone wants Pilky O2, it's open. Do you know what I mean? They can have it. And then, um. <laughs> like, it's, like it's people scrabbling for, oh, I want yeah. Pilky Pil Pil O1. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, because I did boxing and that. Well, you did it once. <laughs> yeah. I'd, uh, I'd box a boy. Because I thought that that's quite a good image as well. That's kind of like people going, oh, don't mess with him. <laughs> I mean, if he asks what your handle is, tell him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's boxer boy and that. <laughs> so. Just had them too, and I used to just go on there and. Pointless. What is the point of this? Well, you just you just meet people, don't you? And you so don't meet people. You say, "What's your handle?" You go, "Box boy." What's yours? Uh, uh, rubber duck. All right. Cheers. No, it's but ridiculous. then but then you'll say like, then you go, "Oh, uh, what's your twenty? What's that mean? That's, where where are, are, you? are you? Well, why don't you say where are you? Because just it's in case there's someone who's listening in who who you know you hear about this all the time, don't you? People listening, jotting stuff down. Oh, right, so just in case someone in the world doesn't know what handle means, they're, they're out of the loop. They're yeah. out of the loop. It's hardly the, it's not a difficult code to crack, is it, yeah. if you're trying to track someone? It's hardly the head of the mafia talking to each other because the FBI are on the wire. It's ridiculous. Like, I go, oh, you keep saying that, wash your handle, and they come back with something else. I, don't, <laughs> I can't work out what's going on. <laughs> no, it's, like, it's like anything, isn't it? That's what codes, <clears throat> that's, what, you know, that's what codes are all about, isn't it? You, Set them up and that. Go on and tell me, tell me the code then. Reveal it long last to the world what yeah. these codes are. Right, so yeah. what's your 20? Where oh, are you? This okay. is better than the Enigma. Yeah. Right, now here we go. Right. How many candles are you burning? Uh, does that mean how big's your car or something like that? Horsepower or something? See? No, that's, that's oh, how old Oh, what are you? time is it? No, how old are you? What, how old are you? Okay. Ah, right, right. okay. Uh, how many okay. candles are you burning, of course? Gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. So what the, what's the answer come back? You go, uh... I'm 15. 14. Brilliant. That code, <laughs> that code, it, there's no one going to work that out. I wish you'd have kept Absolutely a diary not. of this, because this has been fascinating. Now and again, someone will come in and go, uh, side on, right? What's that mean? And that means, like, there's someone sat there listening into this Ooh. chat and going, this sounds interesting. Yeah, no, it does Unlikely, <laughs> yeah. And they, they want to join in, so they sort of go, side on, you go, side on, bring it in, right? All and right. And they go, all right. All right. <laughs> How many candles are you burning? <laughs> yeah. Round What's your 20? That's a good round again. Yeah. See you later. What's your 20? How many <laughs> yeah. candles are you burning? Oh. And, I mean, it seems to me that what you should have done is make made a note the first time so that when you then speak to them again, you don't need to ask them those questions. <laughs> Can I just confirm that you're burning 15? <laughs> it's that time again. Do the jingle. Oh, man, can you? Oh, my God.
done. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay. Uh, I'm, just gonna, I'm, gonna be, I'm gonna do a really good one. Okay, good. Okay. Oh, chimpanzee! That monkey news, yeah. So high pitch, Jesus. Right, do you know it's it's nearly time for the Winter Olympics again. Okay. Is it? Okay. They sort of come round every four years. Is it this year? Is it? Yeah. And uh, the 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 last one that happened. Four years ago. Yeah. There was a there was a bit of an incident. Oh no. Do you remember any winners that were monkeys? In any of the no, tournaments? Of course not. No. So, it's so not, anyway, it's not going to be that because it wouldn't be true. Go on. Yeah. So anyway, one one of the uh, popular events, um, bobsleigh. <laughs> okay. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Um, you know, it you know it works. Well, you it's need like four sleigh. men. Is it four men or five? Four men. men. It's four. Yeah. So it's definitely four men that you need, need on a four men. team. Is it and two? And there's two team bobsleigh. But as well. they're always men. Is that right, Rich? Don't <laughs> just clarify. With the Winter Olympics, you can't have any animals taking part. No, and they and they also well, no, because they, they wouldn't be allowed. And two, there's no way they could disguise it because not only would they see it straight away, right? But they have blood tests, <laughs> right? Okay, so, which would show up. So they definitely know if it was well, a, blood tests. Kind of non-human. It's impossible. It would be literally impossible to have anything other than a human. <laughs> <laughs> in, bo- in a bobsleigh team. Fine. Okay. So carry on. So anyway, the the, the country was so doing anyway. really well in the qualifying stages. Oh yeah. But the problem was there was there was like two members mm. who were getting all like the press and stuff. Oh right. Yeah. Anyway, so this one member was getting fed up because the the other two were getting all the press and what have you. So he said, I- "I'm not happy with this. Yeah. I'm jacking it in." Oh. So they were like, "You're joking? We've, we've qualified. We're getting into like the main race and everything. Mm. You can't leave us now." And he said, "Well, you could do it all." On your own before, you know, you, the way you were acting, like you didn't yeah. need me, so I'm going. Yeah. So the clock's ticking, it's getting close to the big race and everything. Of course it is, yeah. They're like, what, what are we going to do here? The substitute like, they took with them. What are they well, going to do? Have, yeah. yeah, they would take the substitute, so get no, in. No, they, they, didn't, they didn't have any of them and that. What, it's, what, you know, a lot I, of injuries and stuff. Or just get a mate to do it, just get a mate or a friend yeah, or, or the coach to do it, yeah. But, you know, there's a lot of responsibility on these people and, mm. you know, you won't want to let your country down and that. And they're like, what right. are we going to do? Get a waiter or anyone. Anyway, the time comes to the race. Seems to be three people on it. There appears to be three, okay, yeah. Um, they start off, they're whizzing round the track faster than normal, they, they're beating their old record. Right, amazing. Because the new fella they've got a little bit smaller. Oh. Right, of course. Right, is, he in, so is he in the box there? Is he pushing? He's, he's in it. Oh, right, okay. Right. He's wearing a uniform and a helmet, though. He's, he's got a helmet on, like. he's got the kit face. on. Um, nobody knows who he is, but the country's do. loving it. They're they like, well, it looks like we're going to break all our records, you know. Good. It's good that they found someone new. Yeah. Bet the other fella who left is is sort of kicking himself, thinking, "Oh, I could have been part of this." <laughs> anyway, this wasn't a bloke that had very short legs and long arms, was it? Anyway, what happened is they're whizzing round the track and what have you, faster than ever, yeah. faster have you? than ever, right. and the press are like going, beating all records here. They mm. started taking photographs, <gasps> of a lot of flashes from the cameras and stuff. Right, of course. Mm. Suddenly, the bobsleigh goes a bit sort of mental and whizzes off off the track. Ambulance comes rushing over and stuff. The other two members are looking pretty nervous for some reason. Mm. Oh, what are they doing? They're saying, look, um, don't take the helmet off because, you know, you can do more damage to the, the well, neck. Well, don't tell the paramedics how to do it. Uh, right. They know their job. Yeah, they know their yeah, job. Yeah, yeah. Please, so they were like, yeah. just, just, you know, and plus, you know, he doesn't. He, he came in at last minute to help us out. He doesn't want everyone to know who he is. He's, yeah. he's not after the limelight. Yeah. Like some of the members the, we used to have. He just, yeah. just was helping his country out. Yeah. Leave the helmet on. Anyway, they get him in the ambulance and stuff. The other two are looking a bit worried and what have you. They're oh. gutted, they lost the race. The little bloke, is the bloke not saying anything? Is he not? He's, he's in the ambulance now. Is he not saying anything, though? Anyway, we reported that one of the ambulance drivers said that, that on that on that sort of dreadful night when, you know, the country lost out on a medal in the bobsleigh, he sort of reported that there was a monkey in the back of the ambulance. People were, like, going, ah, you're joking, I don't remember you? this. I don't remember this he, not, he, Well, this is it, you see, because they sort of swept it under the carpet oh, a little bit. Man. They were like, this Bullshit. is crazy talk. This, this, this is shit crazy again. talk. Once talk, absolute shit. Where'd you get this, this from? This is crazy talk, right? It is but, crazy talk, and it's from the mouth of Carl Pilkington. And, and, but, the, but the weird thing is, that backed it up. Well, following week, okay. um, there was a story of some people who visited the zoo saw a chimp in a neck brace. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, that's this week's monkey. Yeah. <laughs> well, he just ends so simply, and that's this week's monkey news. <laughs> God. I love how you know it's coming, and it's still just fantastic. This is fun. This, the show is so much fun. I just, I love it. And I'm so glad that there's so many episodes that I get to watch. It's just awesome. And it just, I don't know, it's, it's, it's really getting, just getting better. 
it's just getting better. I think I liked the episode before a little bit more with the with the part where he was washing up at the window and stuff. Uh, that was just great. But um, I love this show. I love it. It's just so entertaining, and it's funny too because I was I was very, I was very, I can't say this word, <laughs> skeptical. I think the word is. Or am I saying it backwards? Whatever. I was very uneasy about it being animated and stuff. I thought I was going to like it. I thought I was going to like... Like, in my mind, it was a way to ruin the podcast. They should have just filmed it, and it's Carl, and it's Ricky, and it's Steven, and it's funny. And I, I just thought they were going to ruin it. But it makes it so much better. It is so spot on, and it is so funny. And whoever really took the time to, to animate just details understands these people so well it's just so freaking well done and it's so funny and it adds so much to the humor and I just love it and the little sound effect everything it's just this is brilliant I love this show and I'm so happy I'm getting to watch it and and I that I'm, I'm happy that there's a lot more to go so it's just awesome thank you guys so I don't even remember who suggested this it was like several people suggested this so I'm just so excited for it so thank you so much this and um, an idiot abroad it's just brilliant. And then when I have, when I finished that, I got the moaning, life of moaning or something like that. There's, some, there's more. There's always more. And I love it. I am so excited. I'm so ready for it. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Just, it was good. It was good. I was super excited for it, but it was just, it's always just, it delivers. The show delivers. Anyway, um, nah, I just hope you guys enjoyed. <laughs> I hope you got to laugh and all those things. I hope you guys are off to doing great and fabulous things, enjoying life, eating yummy stuff, sleeping well, you know, living, laughing, loving, all those things. I hope you guys are just having the best of times. Anyway, guys, thank you all of you and um I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to go <laughs> cuz I ramble. I'm going to go. Ooh, ooh, if there's anybody that can explain to me in the comments if you do not have the inner monologue and you want to explain kind of sort of how your thoughts form I'm very interested because I never got a clear explanation Ricky said it kind of just conceptualizes or whatever uh, I'm interested I want to know anyway um, toodles and special thank you to my members you guys are awesome bye